Work together and figure out any. <laughs> no. I'm not working with you again, ever. You think I want to work with you? I do, actually. Yeah. Take a look in the mirror, Liz. No one can stand you. Except for that poor kid, Pryor. But you'll be breaking his heart real soon. Get out of my scene. Go on. Mm. That was Jodie Foster and Haley Reese. In true detective night country, as a couple of damaged cops in Alaska forced to work together after eight Arctic researchers mysteriously disappear. Yeah. Gone. And they both are joining us now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> I would say uh, definitely damaged, but also badass. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that. But I have watched the entire True Detective anthology series. The first season, I literally watched three separate times. Um, but it's always had this male energy to mm -hmm. it. And now this time, you've got the two leads, both of you, and the showrunner's also female. So is that part of what drew you to the project? And what can you tell us about this season? I mean, it was, you know, I was a beloved fan of the first season as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, being the two male characters and the two male detectives, it had a very male perspective of it, which mm -hmm. wasn't bad. But we had the the two detectives that had hated each other but worked really well together. So when we when I saw the first of all, the Issa constructed such a masterpiece with the story, it drew yeah. me in. And then you had the female perspective with the Alaskan cold, dark, it all kind of intertwined into That's one. such a creepy element. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it did. So <laughs> yeah, it is. Now, um, Jody, I have to ask you, fans are picking up on okay. some gentle Easter egg slash nods oh. to Silence of the Lambs. Oh. <laughs> Was that intentional? Uh, well, it is horror, it is dark, it's yeah. a thriller, um, and these are female cops in a male world, so um, I guess those are the similarities. And there's a couple of things that might remind you of that, but so I don't yes, think it was on the first what you're saying <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I think if yeah. Issa was here, I think she'd say that Sansa the Lambs and Seven, so two very important yes. movies oh. in the genre, kind of were, were, were intertwined with True Detective the, mm -hmm. of season one, yeah. and so we, huh. this, this show is kind of a legacy of that. It's okay. ah. amazing. Um, Kaylee, I didn't realize this. This is only your third acting That's gig. That's shocking. But you're actually a world champion boxer and a pioneer in the sport for women. You were actually in the first women's fight ever broadcast on HBO in 2018. Wow. Just incredible. And now you're appearing on an iconic show airing on HBO, so kind of a full circle moment for you. Did you ever think this early in your acting career you'd be appearing with an icon like Jodie Foster? No, I couldn't imagine it <laughs> at all, but it was just one of the biggest cliche saying is that I hope things that you can't ever dream of happen to you, and I'm like, this is just living proof of it. And even with the HBO um, fight being on HBO, the first female fight, it wasn't supposed to happen. Another fight fell through. So oh. things just happen the way they're supposed to when they're supposed to. And um, you know, I got I went in there with a job to do and a story to tell and I left with a friend. So this has just been a magical experience. Oh. You're fabulous. Yeah. You're so good at that. <laughs> and well, I wanna ask, do you think you'll ever go back to professional fighting? I'm in a position where I don't have people talking about me after over 15 years as a pro saying, hey, she needs to hang it up. It's more or less like, when you're coming back? And oh. it's like, you know, I don't have to if I don't want to. Uh, fighters, we don't know how to quit. Uh, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for boxing. As, so um, you, I didn't retire yet, we'll just say that. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, you know, we were talking before about, I did anyway, about Naya and how you guys are in the water where she's in the water. You have to feed her like a, like a dolphin. I mean, it was crazy. And, and, she and, didn't pre-digest the food. She was just putting I it know, in but, but the actor, what I'm talking about is the acting is not easy to do yeah. because of circumstances beyond your control. Like in this, in this series, it's freezing. It takes place in Alaska, where you actually shot in Iceland, yes. yeah. which the, the temperature was negative 15. Oh. Plus, the wind chill probably brought it down to negative 40, like in Iowa the other day. Yeah. So um, tell me about that part, the physical. We, we like adventures, right? We like adventures, and oh. I think that. Um, that sounds very cool. It kind of fuels <laughs> the feeling in the film, yeah. and um, that's how you get emotion, is really through your body and how you understand characters through your body. So we were in it. It was all real. Like, it doesn't <laughs> look like it's on a soundstage. It's no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. This was my first time watching this series, and I loved it. Oh. And I, I told you earlier, 
I just had something in the pit of my stomach the whole time, but it was so good, so well yeah. done. That is intentional. So yeah, yeah I want you felt to feel that, that way. <laughs> um, now, Kaylee, the storyline is centered around the indigenous people of Alaska. I love that. Um, and their relationship to the land, which is something that we ignore so much in this country, unfortunately. As someone who identifies as indigenous, um, you say it was important for you to get the details right. How do you go about doing that, and what do you want people to take away from the story? Well, I'm really glad you brought that up because, you know, the land doesn't belong to us. We belong to the land. And as indigenous people, our ancestors have worked together with Mother Nature and the land since the dawn of time. So it's just kind of a constant reminder. And being of mixed heritage of Cape Verdean and Wampanoag heritage, you know, I, I'm not, I'm indigenous, but I'm not from Alaska. I'm not Inupiaq. I'm not Inuit. So as protocol, whenever I'm out of my territory, so to speak, you kind of, you ask permission, ask questions. I really want to hone in on the representation as what do you guys want to see? How do you want to see yourself represented mm -hmm. on screen? Because I didn't grow up seeing these faces. They, we have a chance to see a rural part of America and even not something that we see as Native Americans so much. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I had every detail, every story, every laugh, every cry, every taste of food, every, what the experience was instead of assuming, because that's been a mistake in history for so long. I just wanted to make sure, how do you want to see yourself on screen? I want you to be proud to watch this in representation. I suspect oh. you nailed it. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> in that same vein and honoring all the parts you just mentioned, you, I hear you two actually <laughs> took a vacation together after filming yes. to the real Alaska. Yeah, yes. we wanted to go see our friends that we had met um, while we were up there, some of the actors, and oh, wow, look, there's pictures of us. <laughs> um, Kaylee does everything really well, so any any opportunity there was to do something like fishing, I'd be in there, and I'd wait all day, and I didn't get anything. She'd get like 20 fish, <laughs> and then she can just chop all the wood, and she just, on one stroke, just boxer. chopping the wood. <laughs> her and Brian, her husband, and uh, we just had a, we had a great time, but it was, it was rugged. And uh, it was just great to see our friends there in their element and to have them teach us about their lives. And a button to the experience. You speak so much of the visceral process. To kind of finish there is perfect. Yeah, yeah. I sort of wish we'd gone beforehand. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but I felt proud, I think, that we represented them well and um, that they saw themselves in and that the central voice of the show, spoken through Kaylee's character, is really the center of the, of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kaylee, I understand you did something to commemorate the end of shooting that those of us who are diehard fans will appreciate. What Can you tell the audience what that was? <laughs> so at the end of the, the shoot, it was kind of like a ceremony thing of like just a closing chapter in the whole experience. So I asked one of the women who was actually on set um, if she knew anybody who did tattoos. And she said, funny story, I just learned how to do traditional and UPX stick and poke. And oh. to commemorate the end of the show, I got the spiral that is represented with the true detective along mm -hmm. with a design to kind of I just oh. remember the experience oh, and it's wow. on my foot. Well, yeah. yeah. And the spiral is just, you know, it's not, it's full circle because it doesn't come to an end. It just yeah. keeps going and going. I love so that cool. she said, I just started. And you're like, OK, let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's so no cool. Right tattoos for, jo for you, huh, Jody? No oh, tattoos. No, no, I think I'll stay away from this. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't I stay a, away I from this. I got a snow globe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, and that, was, that was good. Don't stay away from this show so much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now I'm going to come back, because look what you guys have. I know. I know. It was very nice to see you. Thank Lovely you. You too. Our thanks to Jody Foster and Kaylee Reese. True Detective Night Country airs on HBO Sunday nights and is available to stream on Max.